we begin this video by removing the throttle body. Its wiring harness connects to the main harness on the intake manifold support bracket. To unplug it, you have to pry the latch upwards with a flat screwdriver. Then you can just pull the cable out. The four internal hex bolts you see hold the throttle body to the adapter. They shouldn't be on very tight, but still, take care not to strip the heads. Look at this clean throttle body. So clean, so clean. Perfect. Next, remove the adapter that spaces the throttle body from the intake manifold. Sticky. Ow, ow, ow. Yow. Once your wounds have healed, or at least when the pain isn't as bad, tape the manifold shut so stuff doesn't fall down there. Now start disconnecting the throttle linkage. More detailed instructions will follow, but basically you need to remove the closing spring, then the throttle cable, then the Bowden cable spring, and finally the Bowden cable itself. Well, apparently super clean is purple, huh, which is cool. Anyway, so I guess you're starting to understand what these bottles are gonna be used for. So in there, I am soaking my uh, throttle body springs. Nice focusing action there, camera. Let's help you out with some manual focus. There you go. In there, you can see the two throttle body springs. They're having a nice little bath. And removing the throttle linkage and the cable aren't actually too difficult let's see this okay so let's go back on auto here uh, all right so the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the um, the cable from this eye and that you achieve really easily right, here's the cable that I've that I've put all right there you go the cable so there's the clip. This little bushing, uh, well, the little plastic clip here on the end, you can actually remove it. Hold on. Let's do it with two hands. All right, there you go. It just, it slides off. And once this is off, it's really easy to move the cable out. And then to pass it through the eye over here, well, you have to have the little clip off its uh, off the end, and then you can kind of pass it through diagonally and remove the cable. You also need to remove both the connecting rods from the cruise control linkage. You can just pry those out. They are little ball and nipple connectors. Okay, before I proceed, uh, I need to show you guys something. I found a dodgy spark plug wire. Okay, that's this is wire number four. And they're all supposed to have 2,000 ohms of resistance. That's why you have to buy resistorless plugs because the wires are already uh, have the correct resistance. So anyway, let's... Okay, these spark plugs are old. I can actually toss these out. So grab those, toss them in. Okay, let's make sure you can see my multimeter here. Yeah, you can see it. All right, so... I plug this end in here, okay, and we plug this end in there, and, well, as you can see, it's all over the place. Oh, it almost got two kilo ohms there, nearly. Oh, all right, 300 kilo ohms, three. This wire is... It's a bad wire. And the thing is, I'm not cheap. I think you guys know that. I mean, I'm, I'm cheap on the tools that I buy, but that's because I save the money for stuff that you really need. Look at that, Bosch. These are Bosch wires. So you can't buy individual wires, and apparently Bosch has failed after three or two years even of usage. So I'm gonna get Carlin STI wires. I've read some good things about them and they can't be worse than this garbage. So yeah, I'm gonna have to try those. And I'm gonna keep the, the other three because the other three are good. All right, you know what? Just to show you how they're supposed to measure, here is uh, number two. I labeled them. So number two, spark wire. All right, that goes in there. This goes in here, and there you go. Well, 1.8 kilo ohms, so that's pretty close. So I'm gonna buy a new set, but I'm gonna keep the good wires as spare, just in case anything happens. And this actually totally ruined both, I mean, this bad wire totally ruined the, uh, the plug in here. 
Okay, wait, the light might actually help us out. Light. So, that's, that's ruined. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like corroded or something. I can't really tell. It just compared to the good ones. See, this is what a good one looks like. This is very shiny. And yeah, and then compare these two side by side. You got a shiny one here, and then you have this one. I don't know, it looks corroded or something, but if that's gold plating, well then how the hell did it corrode gold? Anyway, I'm not a chemist, so I can't tell you. If someone is a chemist, you can comment below and tell me exactly how gold got corroded. Anyway, and the problem is, uh, you know what, I don't feel like grabbing the HD camera. I'll just use this. And it also ruined the ignition coil. I cleaned it out a little bit, but to be safe, um, um, see this is where the bad one plugged in, right there. And you know what, just to be safe, I'm not going to reuse this ignition coil. I mean, I want to do the job properly on the first time, so with the amount of stuff that I have unplugged and removed and etc., I'm going to... I'm going to replace the wires and I'm going to replace that one ignition coil that went bad. Anyway. Now it's time for the not so fun part, removing the intake manifold support bracket. Note that at this point I still haven't unclipped the Bowden cable from the throttle linkage. I wasn't sure how to do that at first, so I wanted to think about it while doing something else. Eventually I realized it's really easy to do and got to it. Anyway, to remove the intake manifold support bracket, you'll need a lot of patience. The close side top bolt is really easy to get to, but the far side one is a pain. A swivel head ratchet does help, particularly the spark plug styled ones. The bottom bolt will require two long extensions and a U-joint. Now, before you remove, you can remove the intake manifold support bracket, you have to remove this pesky connector. This is the, uh, the idle speed control connector that connects to the throttle body. Um, the, the problem with it is the first time you do it, these bolts, they're actually, they're, they have, it's a bolt with a nut on the other side of the bracket. And that method makes it extremely difficult to actually remove the connector because you can't really get a wrench in there to counter hold the nut while you undo the bolt from the top. So what happens is those things just spin around forever. But once you get them off, I really strongly suggest that you you drill new holes and you tap them so that you don't need to uh, so that you don't need to have a nut on the other side to counter hold the bolt. Or of course you can just move that connector somewhere else. But I I rather just leave it there. So that's what I did. I, I tapped the I tapped two new holes so I can just screw those bolts directly. And I'll show you through the other camera when I when I unscrew this. All right, pay attention. Light, bing. All right, so what we have here is the intake manifold support bracket, and these are the hole, the, which way? The top ones are the holes that it comes with, and it's a bolt with a nut on the other side. It's very annoying to remove that connector, so I drilled two holes lower, and I tabbed them so that I can just put these in, thread them on, and there you go, it, it holds on. No need to counter hold anything on the other side. Uh, any other recommendations beyond that? Not really. Just don't lose your washers like I did. Because, you know, once you lose a washer, it's never to be found again. fucking drawer of washers all over the place. <sighs> but, I found the washer that fits. You gotta look on the bright side of things, because sometimes that's all you have. Okay, 
now I'm just gonna document what I'm doing because I've been known to forget what I'm doing on video. I know I'm gonna edit this maybe a week or two after I actually filmed it, and I'm like, hey, what the hell am I doing here? And that's not helpful for you guys, right? So right now I'm removing the bolts for the harness, just the bolts that hold the harness to the manifold, because I'm gonna need I'm gonna need those bolts to I'm sorry, I'm gonna need the harness to be able to move around. Because I think I'm gonna remove the intake manifold, get the chance to clean it out, and all that good stuff. Okay, Slavic squat. Since you'll be using pretty much every tool you own to do this repair, I strongly suggest that you, uh, you practice putting your tools back where you found them. Because me, personally, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in spreading your tools everywhere until the job is done and then you spend the whole day cleaning them up. But this is going to be a lot easier if you, if you put stuff back where you found them, more or less. Preferably more than less. Actually, preferably completely, because that's how the Germans make cars. <sighs> okay, next step. What the hell is the next step now? Okay, yeah. Uh, next step, remove the ignition coils. And for that, you will need to fish out the long ground cable that goes from the coils to the grounding point on top of the fender. Then, simply unbolt the coils and let them drop. You will have to wiggle them out while using your finest geometry skills to get them past the cruise control linkage. There is a gap between the starter motor, cruise control linkage, and air conditioning low side hose, and that's the gap that you are aiming for. Uh, okay, right. Automatic focus. Now, removing the Bowden cable is really easy. See, it, it latches on this connector here, and basically all you have to do is just slide it back. See how it gets wider towards the back? You just have to you just push it back, that's it. It comes right off. And then you clip it out of there, and then there you go. Your Bowden cable's disconnected. I'm gonna zip tie it to the vacuum line for the vacuum modulator, that way I don't forget to plug either of them, because, you know, this is really easy to forget, it's hidden. And then you wonder, well, where the hell, like, why is my transmission not shifting smoothly? It's because you haven't plugged your vacuum modulator back in. So I'm going to zip tie the both of them together so I don't forget about either of them. Now with the Bowden cable out of the way, it will be just a little bit easier to get to the ignition coil bolts. I do realize I've rambled on a little bit more than I did in the previous video, but hey, it's nice to have something a little less dense. Anyway, stay tuned for more disassembly, and I promise I'll try to compress the next part some more so we can get to the fun stuff faster.